welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, again, it's Achieving Compliance Excellence Through Effective Training, Documentation, and Management. Um, I, I've been fortunate to present um, several webinars uh, in, the, in the past year and a half uh, that detail um, many elements of, of what we're going to talk about today. But today's, today's webinar is really the prequel to those, uh, to those webinars. And, um, and really, the intent of it is to build a case uh, for, for doing it right and to provide a, a, a roadmap or, or a, a guide for, uh, for how organizations uh, should uh, think about implementing, implementing effective uh, compliance or effective uh, training documentation and management for compliance issues in their organizations. Now, what... Um, Okay, well, sorry about that. What we're going to talk about today, these are basically the topics. Uh, we're going to talk about the relationship between human behavior and organizational performance. And I know that may sound like we're getting off the reservation here a little bit, but that it's really important to know how and why people do things as it relates to the subject that we're talking about uh, to, uh, to uh, emphasize its importance. We're going to talk about, you know, how training, documentation, and management action really impact uh, compliance excellence. We're gonna talk about the elements of compliance excellence. Uh, the, the cost of, of human capital, uh, what it costs and what it can yield. Um, when we talk about the human element in this process, it's very significant and, um, and the benefits that can be derived uh, is, is very significant as well. We're, we're gonna discuss something that, uh, that's called the 6L performance engineering model which really rolls up everything that we're going to talk about today into a very easy to understand model of human performance that we can apply um, to this subject area. Um, although I'm going to be talking about a couple of case studies throughout the body of this webinar, you know, there's, there's one case study that I want to showcase before we actually get into the implementation of this process uh, uh, that, uh, that we'll discuss. And then finally, I, I want to talk about, you know, how to, uh, uh, how to implement uh, a process like this in your in your organization? Now let's um, let's begin with a bit of a bit of an overview. Um, essentially, regulated industries have really changed radically over the last 20 years. And 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 whenever uh, and I have to say that you know in a laughing way that when Ricardo um, introduces me, he always makes me feel very old because he says that I have 30 years experience in the business. But but I really do, and and, I, and I've had to I had an opportunity to see. Uh, the uh, the business change uh, significantly over that time period. Um, today, you know what's happening. Companies, com you know, comprising the, the uh, regulated industries, and we're talking about pharmaceuticals and medical devices, cosmetics, foods, beverages. You know, they're they're really challenged every day um, to excel because of the emergence of what new new technologies. You know, intense competition. We know we know that uh, the companies are under uh, under intense. Um, uh, competitive uh, requirements, uh, a shortage of trained workers. Believe it or not, there are a shortage of, of, of good trained pharmaceutical workers, a pressure to produce uh, uh, quality products and really contain costs. How many times do we hear that? Do more with less. Uh, you don't have the resources that you need. Um, you know, improving efficiency and effectiveness. Globalization has a significant impact. I'm finding myself more and more working across uh, across borders, across oceans on, on similar projects or the same projects with many, many different people. Um, and certainly uh, heightened uh, regulatory scrutiny. Um, and you can also add to that uh, third party relationships, both uh, manufacturing and logistics that are both becoming uh, so significant today in the way uh, our regulated industries are doing business. Now, what happens? These uh, these pressures basically filter down. They filter down to the supervisory and the worker levels. You know, often uh, opening the door uh, to uh, to shortcuts, workarounds, and quick fixes, so that you know these people are trying to please. They're trying to meet their requirements. They're trying to meet the um, uh, the, the the needs of management as, as management uh, uh, articulates them. Uh, and and these uh, shortcuts, workarounds, and quick fixes really often intentionally or unintentionally circumvent the quality system. The, um, the uh, uh, SOP documentation, I'm oh, sorry, I'm very, very sorry, I just skipped a piece there. Um, you know, we talk about documentation training and, and responsible management in regulated environments really are, are, the, are the crucial components of that quality system. Documentation, training, and responsible management. They're, they're really the, the key 
um, the very, very key elements. Um, if done well, if they're done well, if they're implemented well, they'll, they will absolutely prevent those shortcuts, workarounds, and quick fixes from, from happening. Um, they will significantly contribute to achieving not only a compliant organization, but one that is uh, both efficient and effective. Uh, efficient and effective. When we talk about you know efficiency and effectiveness, you know efficiency is defined really as how fast we do something, and effectiveness really is is uh, described as how well we do it, both from a, uh, a quality and a regulatory standpoint. And, and you need both of those uh, in play uh, to certainly um, uh, to certainly impact uh, the operation positively. Um, now, how documentation or, or, and training are viewed organizationally really can have a, a very negative or a very positive impact on operational effectiveness and certainly uh, increase or decrease your, your, uh, your regulatory risk. Um, you know, I just would ask you to think about how is compliance and compliance documentation and, and real training viewed in your organization as we, as we continue and go through our, uh, our presentation today. Um, in terms of SOP documentation, which is really the, the cornerstone of all of this, SOP, SOP documentation in, in reality uh, is crucial to the organization on so many levels beyond what, what many people really can comp really comprehend and think about. And it, it is uh, unfortunately viewed uh, within many companies as being restrictive, uh, being very costly, um, being stifling in a serious time and position, although everyone understands that it's required to meet regulatory requirements. Training, uh, which is um, uh, an integral required component of regulatory documentation and certainly a regulatory requirement unto itself, is, is very similarly viewed uh, within organizations. You know, we're talking about, uh, you know, it takes too long, it costs too much, uh, it, there's too much effort that, that, we, that we need to do, uh, we can achieve uh, the training levels that we need in other ways. Um, and, and certainly when we talk about training here, certainly when I talk about training, I, I, I'm not talking about something called read and understand. And if you're all within this industry, you certainly know what I mean when I say read and understand. And, and I, I will uh, detail that in some depth as I go forward. Um, now, what happens in other companies? In other companies, there are, there are some companies out there where compliance documentation and training and that relationship built between the two are really viewed as essential to effective control of their processes. The protection of the ultimate consumer or patient, which really is something that we we all uh, we all strive for, and the development of the company's uh, human capital, and, you know, and and the expenditures for both of those or, or all of those are really viewed as investments, not as expenses. Um, however, these companies are really uh, in in the minority. Um, an example, if you look at some of these companies, um, example of of overall company performance and regulatory compliance uh, for some of these organizations, you will see that uh, what they demonstrate or what they, what they are uh, uh, a part of is, is really uh, excellence and in industry leadership. I've been very fortunate in my career to work, to having worked for, for some, of these, uh, some of these organizations. Um, now let's, let's talk about what are the issues? What are things that are wrong? Uh, let's talk about things that are wrong and things that, that, uh, that are a risk before we talk about how to make things better. Um, if we talk about, um, you know, SOP and SOP documentation, let's just go through the list. Uh, documentation is not written by technical writers. Well, who is it written by? You know, doc 